Today we're going to talk about the female reproductive system. It will be composed of three parts. The first part has to do with the ovary and the hormonal orchestration of the reproductive process. Part two has to do with the uterine tube, uh, how things are different during the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. And part three, we will continue with the cervix and vagina, and then we'll pick up the placenta uh, and end with the mammary glands. Female reproductive system. Today we're going to talk about part three of the female reproductive system. We're going to talk about the cervix, the mammary gland, and the placenta. We want to compare the structures and functions of the mammary gland in different stages of, of activity. We want to identify the three layers of the cervix uh, and the vagina. And we want to identify the villi and intervenous space of the placenta. Relate these structures to the placental function is what we want to do today. Now we've just uh, finished with the, the uterus and now we're going into the cervix. So this is the uterus. Remember the endometrium, myometrium, parametrium. And then the endometrium gives rise to the opening there to the cervix. So we see the cervix coming through there. The cervix has glands. And here we can see where these glands uh, that uh, produce uh, fluid um, to allow sperm to go through uh, at the time of uh, close ovulation. Otherwise, it produces a barrier for bacteria to go in through there, one of the functions of the cervix. And that mucus has to change uh, with hormonal uh, regulation. And if it doesn't change, they may give more estrogen to make it the, the mucus change to so be susceptible to sperm in the case of, of infertility. But so we have uh, columnar epithelium uh, on the surface there, but uh, on the outside, on the uh, outside of the cervix, uh, you have stratophosquamous epithelium, uh, which is continuous with the stratophosquamous epithelium uh, of the vagina. And here we can see the, the cervix, there's um, uh, lots of connective tissue in through there, all in through there, and this is where we are, we're just right there, so there's lots of connective tissue, and then this is the cells on the surface, and we can see them, uh, look like simple columnar uh, epithelium, uh, which are making the cervical mucus, so they're producing cervical mucus. Here we can see the cervical mucus uh, slipping down through there, uh, which will close up the uh, the um, the opening there uh, during the time that the uh, is not close to ovulation. Uh, here we can see on the outside of the cervix. So you have this columnar epithelium in the inside where you've got secretions, but on the outside, cervical os, uh, you have stratophosquamous epithelium, so it abruptly changes stratophosquamous. So it's a junction of the uh, endocervix and the exocervix, exocervix being the part that projects into the vagina. <clears throat> now, uh, here we can see the, the vagina stratophosquamous epithelium, uh, and you can see connective tissue and some uh, uh, this is smooth muscle fibers as well, but note there's no glands, so there are no mucous glands in the cervix, uh, uh, in the vagina itself. Here we can see the stem cells on the surface, the prickle cells, uh, in through there, non-cretinized um, uh, stratophosquamous epithelium is what we uh, is what we have here. Uh, the basal cells at the base giving rise to these cells that ultimately are sloughed off, non-cretinized. Epithelium. The wall of vagina lacks glands. Any mucus in the vagina is produced by cervical glands, which may slip down through there, or uh, other lubrication comes from uh, blood plasma. So you get leakage of blood plasma uh, into the um, lumen of the vagina, and that uh, yields uh, lubrication for uh, copulation to occur. Here we can see again. They're evident, the basal layer, uh, the spinosum layer, uh, and then uh, the stratum corneum layer, but it's not cratinized in through there. You just have flattened cells uh, with some of which still have the nuclei on the surface. So uh, in the uh, cervix itself, we see these epithelial cells, 
simple columnar epithelial cells, and that was the mucous glands of the endocervix, and then on the outer side, non-cretinized stratified squamous epithelium uh, of the of the vagina. He received the epithelium of the vagina, again the basal layers, uh, his buccal layers, uh, and then the stratum corneum uh, layer, which is non-cretinized, as I mentioned to you before. Uh, and so we see lamina propria and the muscularis externa uh, in the vagina. If we look at the mammary gland, we can see uh, this one's inactive. 180, 80, slide 89 is inactive. Um, and here we can see, so that's connective tissue, but we can also see uh, some of the alveoli and alveolar ducts that are located in through there. And the book has a good representation of the mammary gland development for the activity. This is mature but inactive, and so you mostly have just the uh, the ducts uh, with little little cells at the end of replaced. But early pregnancy, you start taking up a little budding, and then mid pregnancy, uh, they're more elaborate, and then at a term of pregnancy, and also a lactating one uh, has fairly large alveoli. Uh, secreting the milk that ultimately be re released uh, out through the through the nipple. So here we see uh, the, the mammary gland, uh, and of course the function of the mammary gland is to provide nourishment for uh, for the offspring. We see the mammary gland uh, here uh, with a series of uh, several uh, ducts that uh, open up here. It's not like one duct as in a cow in humans. Is multiple uh, ducts that are come out through there, uh, like different ducts that empty out, and those are running to different uh, uh, lobes, um, and then we have lobules in through there and the secretory units. Now, what's so great about milk uh, is rich in nutrients, full of antibodies, which are very good, um, easy to digest, uh, and on top of that. Um, it's portable and convenient. Nursing mammal mothers have food available whenever babies demand. So even though the mother may not eat every day uh, in, in the wild uh, uh, of, of animals, uh, mammals, uh, uh, the babies can drink every day because they have milk as long as she has enough substance during the week uh, to be able to make milk. And here we can see the cells. This is a milk uh, cell, and it produces uh, a various thing by American secretion, a milk protein, casein, uh, uh, lactose. It's produced there. Uh, also, it produces uh, fat. And fat, we have uh, the apocrine secretion where the fat cells themselves are lined by the plasma membrane that pinches off the apex of the cell. Uh, and if you look at the cells, so these are individual cells in through there, and this is the myoepithelium. So this is myoepithelium muscle cells that make a, a, a net uh, around the gland uh, to cause this milk ejection to occur. And here we can see the myoepithelial cells located. Um, the, the, uh, our class is, is mammalia, and that's named characteristic uh, because of the mammary gland is one that's how it got its name but there's three basic things that makes a mammal characteristic of mammal one is hair uh, we don't have scales the other one is uh, milk producing mammary glands uh, for nourishing the offspring and then special ear bones uh, is the third thing here we see the nipple where these uh, like different ducts are coming through, ultimately be discharged. Uh, also on the surface, we have transverse squamous epithelium uh, on the surface of the nipple, uh, some hair follicles, and there will be sebaceous glands in through there too, as well as as the uh, milk glands. This is inactive um, mammary gland, uh, showing you uh, it has a lumen here and there, but you can see that. Uh, these spots of blue, little lobules, are not very, um, uh, are not very uh, elaborate, not very developed. Uh, this is in pregnancy. You can see 
that uh, there's uh, larger pools of of uh, a circulatory portion of the mammary gland as it, as it developing uh, to occur. You can see it again, and you can here we can still uh, see uh, the alveoli of the cells and a little myoepithelium cells uh, that uh, are on the outside for milk ejection. Later uh, pregnancy, this is late pregnancy, uh, you can see there may be some milk secretion in through there. Uh, the glands are developed and uh, you can see it's very thick with the dark blue. Uh, so the mammary gland uh, is developing with these uh, lobules uh, uh, developing very nicely. Uh, and then finally they'll have a duct that will empty out into the nipple. So this is early preparative uh, phase. This is a lobule uh, that we're seeing, um, alveolar ducts. Uh, and there's connective tissue. Uh, this is one that's active. This is a lactating mother. It's a library connective tissue. I believe a colostrum uh, in the milk, or it would be the first milk. Uh, and here we see the myoepithelium surrounding the ones. So in summary, uh, for the mammary gland, we have the mature but inactive. So these lobules are, are not numerous. Uh, and uh, the lumen is, is not very big. Then we have early pregnancy. Uh, you can see more development uh, of these uh, uh, lobules in through there, more development. And then uh, we don't have uh, mid-pregnancy, but this is late pregnancy where you have uh, development of, uh, uh, of the glands more so. Um, maybe some milk in the lumen, and uh, certainly in the lactating one, we have milk uh, in the lumen one. So these are the different phases as described uh, in the book, either mature, non-active, early pregnancy, or pregnancy, and then final lactation, and then when you regress again after lactating, you return back uh, to the original state. So implantation and placental development, uh, here we see uh, the the myometrium and the endometrium, and this is where um, a, uh, a, a fetus uh, has attached there. So you have different ones. This is the uh, uterant, uterus wall, uh, and you have the morula, multiple cells, the tropoblast, um, and uh, the blastocyst a cavity as you drew there as a tropoblast actually invades into uh, the, the, the mother uh, it does and that let, opens up blood vessels so the blood vessels can interact with uh, with uh, uh, the placenta. Here you can see a little pregnancy there. Finally it, it fills up the cavity uh, and here we can see uh, uh, the cell. You have the cytotropoblast on the outside which does the invasion uh, and then you have the plastic cells on the outside. Uh, uh, they are doing the invading. Cytotropoblasts are actually the ones on the inside, as you see there. But it makes these uh, cavities that ultimately will be filled up with, with blood. And here you can see a 10-day-old uh, pregnancy. Uh, the umbilical cord. Here's one view of an umbilical cord. There's two arteries and a vein. Maybe the vein is a little larger lumen, uh, but the umbilical vein is the one that carries the oxidative blood, uh, which um, uh, comes in from the, uh, the, the mothers. So uh, the, that is, uh, the blood has been exchanged um, uh, uh, through the wall uh, with the with the mother's blood, oxygen transfers from the oxygen from the mother to the baby uh, through uh, through this uh, blood. And here you can see the tree. Um, there's, there's mother's blood bathing this tree here, and so there's no exchange between the mother and the fetal blood. What's exchanged is nutrients and waste and oxygen and carbon dioxide. Here we see the placenta sitting uh, here in this. Uh, um, a wonderful body whirl, a specimen. Uh, there's a spinal cord, the head of the fetus, and there's a placenta. Here we see the placenta, which is uh, 
the baby's lifeline uh, to the mother's blood is what it is and it comes through the umbilical cord and so it flows uh, from the mother to the fetus through the fetus uh, you have uh, maternal arteries that uh, takes nutrients in the arteries to the placenta and then the umbilical vein uh, and then uh, shunts through the liver uh, uh, through the right side to the left side and pumped out throughout the rest of the body. You have two uh, umbilical arteries as they branch off of the branches from the legs and it goes to the placenta and finally back to the uh, to the maternal uh, vein is where uh, is, is where it goes. So the fetus blood is contained uh, in, a, in a system but it goes out to the placenta to get the nutrients and rid the waste as it interacts with uh, the mother's blood through layers. And here we see the placenta, we can see the different layers here. So this would be mother's blood bathing here and in here are the feet is the fetal blood. And so the fetal blood enters and nutrients have to go through these uh, epithelial cells through the endothelial cells to get uh, into the into the fetal into the fetal blood. We see another placenta there, and here we see uh, the cells of the of the placenta of the villi interacting with the with the mother's blood. Is another view of that. If we have a higher mag of that, we can see this would be mother's blood in through here, the cytotropoblast on the inside. This is a geotrope blast, which is invasive on the outside, uh, in through there. And these are endothelial cells uh, of the fetal, the fetal blood vessels. So in order for things to go through, they have to go through these, these uh, couple of layers of epithelial cells, through the connective tissue, through the endothelial cells for oxygen uh, to transfer in, and nutrients to transfer in, and carbon dioxide to transfer out. It's another shot of the umbilical cord showing you uh, two arteries uh, and, the, and the vein. And also, uh, the connective tissue here is different than other connective tissue. It's uh, a mucus-type connective tissue uh, such that the umbilical cord can bind and, uh, and, but not kink uh, is uh, one of, the, one of the, the traits of this uh, mucus special connective tissue, but it is connective tissue. Uh, and so this is an umbilical cord uh, that that we uh, are seeing in both cases. So if we look at connective tissue, uh, the mucus type connective tissue is one of the special types of connective tissue. In terms of our clinical correlation, uh, uh, where the cell bodies uh, in the cells that oxygen located the cell bodies of the cells that release oxytocin are located in the hypothalamus. So uh, oxytocin is released by the hypothalamus. Uh, it comes down uh, into uh, the pars nervosa. That uh, oxytocin then causes milk ejection uh, to occur. Oxytocin is released and milk ejection occur. Which cells of the breast are stimulated by oxytocin? Uh, those are the myoepithelium that surrounds the cells and they cause a milk ejection. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the menstrual cycle changes. You have a menstruation, you have a proliferation, secretion, uh, and uh, the uh, histology changes with that as we've talked about in previous ones. Uh, we also talked about the ovaries and the different types of of follicles and the follicular development uh, and that most of those have primary uh, oocytes in them uh, and until ovulation occur and then after fertilization uh, do you actually get uh, a zygote. So here we can see a uh, pregnant mother uh, and think about the functions of the female reproductive tract, ovum production, sperm reception and, and transport a microenvironment for fertilization to occur, uh, implantation and fetal growth, nourishment and support, uh, and repeat the whole thing if she doesn't get pregnant. 
So these are the books that we want to uh, um, acknowledge because these pictures came from various these books and from uh, body worlds. Let's see. So that concludes the cervix, mammary gland, uh, and the placenta. If this uh, was useful to you, please consider uh, subscribing uh, to our channel. Uh, here's my lovely wife and myself uh, at uh, one of the Christmas parties we had here at Texas A&M University. Thank you.